Hey everybody and welcome. Well, I know a lot of you are students or are soon to be students and I thought it would be fun to see where you're at with your Maya knowledge right now. Okay, so we're going to do a little quiz. Here we go. Okay, everybody, well, you guys ready for this? So, first quiz ever, at least as far as I can remember. We're gonna do 20 questions. Each question, we're gonna have four options. Answer A, B, C, or D, okay? Now, uh, I suggest you write down on a piece of paper, one to 20, and then as we go through each question, you write down your answer. And I'll give you uh, five seconds before I give the actual answer, so you can kind of uh, keep score, all right? Um, what I'll do is after reading out the correct answer, I'll uh, explain why that is the correct answer. So hopefully there's a little bit of an educational element to it, right? Okay, that said, let's get started. So question number one, uh, to move an object's pivot point, you press and hold what? The space bar, the insert key, the D key, or the T key? Okay, now this one is a bit of a trick question because there are two options here that will allow you to move the pivot point, but there's only one option where you have to hold that key. So you can move the pivot point using the insert key, but you hit the insert key, move it, and then hit it again. But if you want to hold down that key, you need to hit D. So the correct answer is the third one, D is the correct answer, okay? Let's move on to question number two. Alrighty, so when baking a normal map in Maya, you are projecting details from the high poly to the low poly model, projecting details from the low poly to the high poly model, moving details from the high poly to the low poly model, or moving details from the low poly to the high poly model. Okay. Well, first of all, when you're baking a normal map, you are not moving anything, you are projecting, right? So what are you doing is you're projecting details from the high poly to the low poly model. So the correct answer is A, right? So that way you have simulated the detail on that low poly model without increasing the poly count. That's the whole idea. And that process where you use that for normal map projection, you do that as well for texturing and so forth, yeah? Okay, question number three. When using the bridge command to connect two objects, they must be combined as one object, may not be combined as one object, combined or not combined doesn't really matter, or need to have the same amount of faces. And the correct answer, of course, is answer A must be combined as one object. In order to bridge uh, two uh, gaps or two sets of edges, they need to be one object, okay? So answer A. Question number four. The hotkey to keyframe an animation is that S, K, A, or P? Now that answer, of course, is answer uh, S, the S to keyframe and animation. Now there's not a lot to explain about that. That just is what it is. So S is the correct answer, okay? Question number five. A 3D character holding his or her arms horizontal to his or her sides is called what? A pose, Z pose, T pose, or X pose? And the correct answer here is the T pose. Now, two of these are actual poses. You have the A pose and the T pose, uh, where the A pose uh, has the arms uh, slightly pointed downwards, kind of in the shape of an A. But if they are pointed horizontally outside the body to the left and to the right, that's called a T pose, okay? Question number six. In order to effectively use a deformation tool on an object, you need to have reverse normals, sufficient subdivision, a high poly model, 
or you can deform an object with the deformation tool. Okay, now the correct answer here is sufficient subdivision. Uh, reverse normals has nothing to do with it. You do need subdivision in order to bend or translate, uh, tra transform an object, sorry. So if you want to deform something, you need a sufficient subdivision. Now the trick here is answer C says high poly model. It doesn't have to be high poly model as long as it has enough subdivision. So you don't necessarily have to go high poly there, right? Okay, question number seven. Light linking in Maya will connect light sources together, will level out the power of light between two or more lights, will allow you to choose what object is affected by your light, or will allow you to control the light temperature on all lights in one go. And the correct answer here is answer C will allow you to choose what object is affected by your light. Now, I did a video on that where I had a, um, a light and I had a spotlight inside of the light bulb. Now that light wouldn't penet penetrate through it because of that mesh. So I basically set up a light linking system saying that the light bulb should not be affected by the light and as such the light could go outside the light bulb. That's how that works, okay? So the correct answer here is C. Okay, question number eight. When needing a lot of duplicate objects in a scene while keeping the poly count low, you might use XGEM, Bifrost, Modeling Toolkit, or UV Editor. Okay, now the correct answer here is A, so XGEM. Bifrost is used for uh, liquids and foam and whatnot. Modeling toolkit, nothing to do with it. UV editor is for UVing. Uh, XGen is the one to use because that has a uh, built-in instancing engine. And by instancing, you can have a whole bunch of objects without increasing the poly count, okay? So the answer is A. Right, question number nine. What are barn doors in Maya? Is that a sound feature? Is that a light feature? Is that a modeling feature? Or is that an animation feature? And the correct answer, of course, is it's a light feature. Barn doors are basically uh, square or rectangular panels on the top and on the sides of around uh, lights to kind of uh, control the spread of the light in that scene, right? So, uh, yeah, the correct answer is B. Next question. Number 10. The quad draw tool is often used for, is that for redesign? for replenishment of subdivision, for retopology, or for remeshing. And the correct answer is retopology. Now, redesign and replenishment of subdivision and remeshing, that's all uh, pretty much nonsense. Retopology, so if you have a high poly model that you, for example, made in ZBrush, and you bring it into Maya, but you want to have a low poly model, what you would do is use Quadra tool to kind of tile over that high poly model and making a low poly model so you can later on bake your maps, right? So the correct answer here is C for retopology. Okay, question number 11. To repeat the last command used in Maya, the shortcut key is what? E, F, G, or H? And of course, the correct answer is a G. So if you know my videos, you know that I call out shortcuts all the time to kind of, uh, you know, ingrain them in your, in your head, basically. So repeating the last command is the G, all right? Question number 12. 12, Arnold is uh, A, the creator of Maya, B, a programming language in Maya, C, a render option in Maya, or D, the name of the Maya plugin for a liquid creation. And of course, the correct answer is that is a render option in Maya. So answer uh, C, okay? 
Now, before we had Mental Ray in Maya, since a number of years, uh, Arnold is the default renderer. Uh, there's also um, Arnold standalone, but uh, yeah, Arnold. So that's the render option, okay? All right, so question number 13. What scale is used by Bifrost in Maya? Is that millimeters, centimeters, decimeters, or meters? Now, this is one where a lot of people go wrong. Um, the correct answer is uh, meters. So the fourth, uh, so answer D, okay, meters. Now, if you have the improper skill settings in your scene, then your uh, fluid simulation might look completely off, right? So it's very important to understand that Bifrost works in meters. So if your scene is up in millimeters, you'll get some very strange stuff going on, yeah? Okay, question 14. Weight painting in Maya. Is that a way to increase the effect of gravity in a character? Is that a way to keep a rig inside of a character? Is that a way to texture a character? Or is that a way to determine the relative uh, joint impact on the mesh in the character? Okay. Well, the correct answer is D. It's a way to determine the relative joint impact on the mesh. Uh, once you have created a character and you have a rig inside, what you would do to keep the rig inside of the model is you would bind skin. So basically connect the skin or the body or the character to the rig, right? Problem is though, that every movement uh, will be uh, kind of uh, the same. So if you want to have certain areas where there's less flex going on than others, that's what you do with weight painting, okay? So the correct answer is D. Right, question 15. Uh, how can you deform a mesh? Uh, a, with a deformer. B, by extruding faces. C, by moving vertices. Or D, all of the above. And of course, the correct answer here is D, all of the above. So obviously you can deform with a deformer if you have enough subdivision, but if you extrude a face or move a vertex, then you're deforming the shape as well. So all of the above, okay? Question number 16. So what's an N-GON? Is that a face with more than three sides? A face with more than four sides? An object with its pivot point outside of the mesh? Or your model after deleting the modeling history? Okay, well, especially people that are new to the 3D uh, business uh, have a hard time understanding what NGONs are. Basically, 3D software calculates in uh, triangles or quads. So basically triangles and double triangles, right? So three point faces and four point faces. As soon as you go up to let's say five, then the software has a very hard time understanding what's what. So an NGON is a face with more than four sides. Okay, all right, yeah, so that's the correct answer. Um, question number 17, we're almost there, folks. We've got 20 questions, so question 17. What's a UDIM? Is that a set of zero to one UV tiles? Is that a unified dimension in Maya? Is that the name of a UV editor? Or is that a keyframe tool for animation? And of course, the correct answer is A. It's a set of zero to one UV tiles. Now, UDIMs are fairly new to Maya. Uh, before you would have a zero to one space. Um, now you can basically have multiple zero to one space UV tiles, which will allow you to have much better uh, quality textures. Okay, so the correct answer is A. Okay, number 18. The graph editor is mainly used by who? Modelers, riggers, texture artists, or animators? Now this one uh, is hopefully not too difficult. Of course, the correct answer is animators. Now it doesn't say that other people will never use the graph editor, but for animators, this is basically the go-to tool. So the correct answer is D, animators. Question 19. 
You bend an object with a bend deformer and then delete the history of the object. You can now still bend the object with that deformer, no longer bend the object with that deformer, move that object without adding history to the log file, or remove the object without an effect on the total poly count of the scene. Okay, correct answer is B. You can now no longer bend that object with that deformer. If you still want to deform it, you can add a new deformer, but with the existing deformer, after you delete the history, you can no longer do that. Okay, and then finally, question 20. What is SSS in Maya? Is that a keyboard shortcut to bend nerve curves? Is that subsurface scattering? Is that subdivision selection subtool? Or is that student syllabus screening? And the correct answer for question number 20 is subsurface scattering. Now, what is that? Well, if you have an object that has a certain material on it, uh, what light basically does is it either bounces off of the object or it penetrates the object, like in this situation, like glass, right? So basically you have a refraction or reflection, but sometimes you have materials like uh, wax or maybe the human skin that allows light to come in to a certain extent. Let's say you have somebody standing in front of a window, lights coming in and you see the light through their ears, right? That would basically be the effect of subsurface scattering. So the correct answer here is B. Okay, so now you answered uh, 20 questions. You have uh, obviously a, um, a score. You have your answers and hopefully you didn't Google it or pause it or whatever. You played fair, yeah? And uh, based on 20 questions, so uh, each uh, two correct answers is one point, okay? So you can kind of calculate what your percentile is. So if you have uh, all 20 correct, then of course your score is 100%. If you have, uh, let's see, 16, then you have 90% and so forth and so on, okay? Now, please let me know in the comments if you enjoy this kind of stuff. Uh, I'm thinking about doing a quiz on the 3D industry in general, so like do's and don'ts and so forth, or maybe on other specific 3D topics, okay? So please let me know in the comments uh, if you like this kind of thing. And also, if you want to test your friends on their knowledge, please share this, okay? Well, that said, thank you so much for watching. As always, if you like the video, hit that thumb up thing. And if you are not subscribed just yet, and you don't want to miss out on future videos, please hit that sub button, okay? Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bye.